what do you do if you don't get accepted to med school? Because this is something that I know a lot of people go through every year, every application cycle, and I myself have gone through it. And I just wanted to share what I would recommend doing if you find yourself in that boat. And a little bit more backstory on me and specifically my dad is that my dad actually, uh, he applied to med school in the 80s and he got rejected from every single med school he applied to and it took him over 150 applications before he got one interview invite. And so it is a very brutal, intense process and it's not forgiving. And it's tough to sometimes get rejected because you're not really told why you failed or why you weren't good enough. Um, and they all say the same thing of, you know, we got many qualified applicants and there's not enough seats. And so better luck next time or good luck with your future endeavors. And thanks again for your application money, you know, and that's, that's what it's like. And so it's a huge bummer. It's a huge letdown. And so if you're in this boat, here's, here's my advice. And I will say that I think as hollow as it sounds, the biggest deciding factors in whether or not you get accepted to medical school are your MCAT and your GPA. And then a in third place, but I'd say a fairly distant third place, is going to be your personal statement. Um, and I know schools say they look at your application holistically, but the evidence suggests otherwise, because if you look at MSAR, which is the AAMC's record of the body of applicants who get accepted to medical schools, you're gonna see that the vast majority of them fall within certain ranges of MCAT scores and GPAs. And you only get a few outliers who are outside of that range. And it's usually something pretty special, but um, you know, so the essay and extracurriculars are those kinds of things that come in that distant third and fourth place. But the two big ones here are gonna be GPA and MCAT, which is again, I think hollow and unfortunate, but that's the system you have. And I think one thing you learn, I'm learning as a first year medical student right now, is that as much as you may hate the system, the system is what it is and you have to kind of just work with it. And if you can't work with it, then you can't get anything positive out with it either. So uh, that's, that is what it is. And um, so if, you had a very low MCAT score, the unfortunately simple thing to say here is that you just need to retake the MCAT and you need to demonstrate that you can score within, you know, your particular school's MCAT range. If your problem is GPA, like my dad's problem was that his GPA, because for my dad, he actually was on academic probation from UC Berkeley for a few semesters because his GPA fell below 2.0 back in the 80s. Um, what he did back then is he went to get his master's degree and I think he did it in physiology or anatomy and he basically just showed that he could get straight A's and um, you know just show med schools that yeah this is you know this is something that is totally manageable um, and so it's it's really kind of unfortunate that it's like the way it is because I think we're missing a lot of people who could be fantastic physicians because of the system that we have in place. But if you want to go to medical school in this day and age with the current system, you need to have the good MCAT score and a good GPA. And so what I've seen some of my colleagues do in med school, how they got here, is that they turn to uh, these post-baccalaureate programs. I believe UCSD or UC Riverside offers one uh, example, and I'm sure you guys can do research on other specific examples, but basically know that there are post-bac programs, so after you finish your four-year degree, where you basically will spend an additional year 
taking classes that are supposed to prepare you for medical school. And there are contracts that these post back programs have with medical schools where they literally say, if you're able to maintain this GPA and you're able to get this MCAT score, then we guarantee you an interview spot. And so that's how more than a few of my medical school classmates got here is that they did that one year post back program and now they're here because they were able to get the right GPA and the right MCAT score in those programs. And so again, that's kind of how we know that MCAT and GPA are really the only deciding factors that make up a lot of at least that first round filter of who's going to get an interview and who isn't. And so um, that is the key thing to take away here. And I will say from the perspective of someone who was applying to medical school a few years ago, one thing I really didn't like is that, you know, I think a lot of people, there's a lot of ambiguity in terms of you know, when you get rejected, was it because of your statement? Was it because of your GPA? Was it because of your MCAT? Was it because of your extracurriculars or lack thereof? You don't know. And so a lot of the med school prep companies that make lots of money, what they do is they're gonna go to you and they're gonna say, hey, you know, probably because you didn't have a right essay. And you know what'll help you get a good essay is one of our, you know, essay writers who charges you a hundred or 200 bucks an hour to, you know, rewrite your thing. And so you think, okay, but you don't know for sure if it was your essay or your GPA or your MCAT that was why you didn't get that. And so you really kind of have to think for yourself on all these things. And when these companies get involved with these business motives to make as much money as they can off you, um, you got to know that a huge part of this is really, uh, you know, making sure that you're applying to schools that you're competitive for. Because if you only applied to MD programs that had, you know, or DO programs that had, you know, their range of accepted MCAT scores and GPAs were things that were just way outside of what you have, then, you know, you don't have a chance. Um, so a huge part of how do you get into med school, especially if you just got rejected, is figuring out what subset of schools out there are you a competitive applicant for based on your MCAT and GPA? And this is statistically objective data. And it's probably gonna be a bit emotional because you're gonna realize, oh, well, you know, UC Davis is my dream school or UCSF is my dream school. I can't get in there because I just don't have the MCAT score that I need or I don't have the GPA that I need. And so there is gonna be some of that going on here too of you're not going to get to go necessarily to your dream school it's great if you do it's fantastic if you do um, and i hope that you do but um the sad reality for most people is that they're not going to have the stats that they need to get accepted to these programs these programs don't care though they're going to say well we're going to look at you holistically because we still want your money off that primary application fee and that secondary application fee that we're going to give everybody even if they had no chance in the first place and so um, you know, it's, it's a very rough, cold, hard business of getting into med school. And so, um, you know, depending on how far away your GPA is from what is competitive for a particular program, I would strongly recommend looking into post baccalaureate programs. Um, I think a mistake that I've heard from my colleagues in terms of you know, if you wanted to get into med school, another path is to get that master's degree first. Um, when I would say, should you compare a master's versus a post back program if you're in that boat? I think that a master's program is a lot more expensive, a lot more time. It's double the time, it's two years. And if you end up not going to med school, you're gonna be in a lot more debt and you're not gonna have much to show for it, unfortunately. Um, whereas those post back programs are much more focused on just getting you that interview, which is kind of that golden ticket, so to speak, from Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. Um, but like that is, in my opinion, the most efficient, effective way to get your foot in that interview door uh, when you're in med school or uh, when you're applying to med school. And so, um, you know, I I can talk 
at length about what interview processes are like. They're different for every campus. Um, I think that's a different topic. Um, but I will say, you know, if your heart's in it and you're able to present yourself professionally and you're able to handle, you know, whatever technical things they might ask you during these interviews, I think you can do fine. It's really just about staying calm and professional and making sure that you're getting across the key points that you want to get across. Because at the end of the day, it's just a sales pitch and you are trying to make sure that you are explaining why you believe you will be a great doctor and a great medical student at their specific institution. So um, those are the key things to take away. And so that's gonna wrap things up for this video on what do you do if you got rejected? And, um, you know, I think, I know it hurts. Um, and I've been there. And I know that it's, it hurts because you know, you've, you've, done your best and it hurts to have people tell you it's not good enough or it's you know not competitive enough for their program and so um you know this really kind of comes down to just taking a deep breath and coming back at it tomorrow and just thinking about what do you need to do to make yourself a competitive applicant for a given program is that a higher gpa is that a higher mcat score um it's most likely one of those two or both um and also figuring out you know, are there other ways you can get your foot in that interview door, like a post back program? I don't really recommend master's programs, but um, that is my advice. And if you have any comments or questions, I'd love to hear them. So let me know and I will talk to you guys next time.